Hello and welcome to the Gun and Gear Review Podcast from the Firearms Radio Network. My name is Ryan Cross and I'm your guest host this evening. Uh, Jacob Challen is uh, MIA, taking care of some sick kids and sick wife. So uh, I'll be doing this podcast sans training wheels tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, to, on today's show, we have Tony Nash, a shooter and reloader enthusiast. Go ahead and say hi, Tony. Uh, how you doing? How you been, man? Pretty good. <clears throat> good. And we also have Derek Miller, an active active duty Marine tank platoon commander. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Derek. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> You got that one fast. Most people, it takes a while before they start saying that. But I promise the one one tank pun, that'll be it. Okay. Tank pun. Um, so, tonight, uh, let's talk about some new, some new products. Um, the first thing that caught my eye this week was H&K is making a civilian, uh, modeled, civilian modeled rifle after the G36. Um... G36 is probably uh, one of German's most famous iconic rifles. It is a um, definitely a modern sporting rifle. Um, it's uh, known for its carry handle that extends from the rear of the receiver all the way forward into it kind of just uh, blends into the quad rail grip. Um, it's in just about every single uh, first-person shooter video game, and you'll see it in a lot of futuristic movies. Um, it's a pretty uh, timeless but still um, contemporary firearm. Um, so the new models, uh, the they're marketing it as the HK243 in Germany, and in the States here it'll be called the HK293 designation. Um, so still 223 chambered barrel, um, and it's civilian, so no happy switch, uh, semi-automatic only, and it will feature a quad rail and take standard GI magazines. Um, hopefully that will include mag, pull, P mags, because that's kind of a, a deal breaker for me if I can't take the dozens of P mags I've got. What about you guys? Yeah. Yeah, same. And uh, I don't like. It. Uh, I'm surprised that they chambered it in 223 if they really did, and not 556. Five, like, did they have to retool all of their stuff, and they're not making this on the same line as they're making the G3s on, or the G36? I mean, not G3. Because uh, that would be a 556 yeah, are... NATO chambering. Right. Um, <laughs> the source that I'm looking at the firearm blog. Yeah. Yeah. They're reporting 223, but. Um, I'm I assuming it, it should be 5.56. I bet it is. I would yeah. I would think uh, that they would not make another barrel machine that in the same pattern, but just a chamber in 2G3 so you couldn't shoot 5.56 in it. Correct. The only reason why, I mean, they say that they cannot sell weapons of war to civilians <laughs> in Germany, um, but 2 3 is the same round as 5.56. So I'm hoping that that political stance... Uh, didn't make the cha the decision to do two two three chambered barrels only. Yeah, yeah, that um, could be. Yeah, you you definitely don't want to throw uh, some five five six in a two two three two two three only a barrel because the yeah. pressures are much greater. Yep. Um. So no uh, listed uh, MSRP. Yeah, um, that was I'm my willing, next question. They're I'm going to be. To take Bets that it'll be above uh, two grand for sure. Anything oh, yeah. H and K means add a yeah. zero onto the number. Yeah. Um, but their their pistols are great and they've got a great reputation for um, being the engineers that they are. So uh, that might be the new hotness that you see at the range instead of the uh, ACR and the uh, the scars. You'll start seeing uh, these little G thirty six clones, I guess. Maybe. I think they're late to the party. I think the SCAR has gotten so popular if you want anything that's not an AR that most guys are going that route. I Especially don't think with gonna... the... Go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, I don't think they're going to break in. And with HKs being as expensive as they are, and they have a, a bad reputation for uh, customer service. If you do need something, like they really don't care. So, compared yeah, to I, I have heard that. heard that as well. 
I think if they want to enter the, the market and, and be kind of at the same level, they need to integrate some, some new features, not just make a, make a G36 clone. Um, so interchangeable barrels with possible different calibers, a 300 blackout, that would get them right on top with uh, everyone else, or at least uh, one step closer. I know the AUG will be available, or the um, the M, the, the the other AUG clone uh, is coming in 300 blackout uh, interchangeable barrels. Same thing with the Scar, and uh, well, the ACR tried really hard to have interchangeable barrels. Um, they really did. They did. My hats off to them. So, uh, for you. Uh, those with expendable income and a taste for exotic sporting rifles, um, keep a lookout for that H and K product coming out um, probably in the next year or so. Yeah, they would be way out of my price range. Yeah, it's like I said. If I'm going to spend that money, I'm going to buy a scar that has already been fielded here and has some support to it rather than buying something from HK that like I said I know if I need something fixed or something they're kind of going to say we'll get to it when we get to it compared yeah. to some of the other places yeah and if you yeah. if you just if you have that HK bug and you don't you can't justify spending the money you can always get a 1022 and get that uh, <laughs> and put that a archangel, archangel <laughs> stock yeah yeah they got a 22 that's a uh, clone, that MP5 clone. That's oh, about yeah. all I could afford. <laughs> the GSG. Yeah. yeah. And well, actually, HK is. Yeah, HK and Walter is. Uh, I think Umarex was the brand yeah, that they, or the, yeah. the company they were licensing through. Uh, those are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind the SD version. I don't really care for that. That's um, not wire stock, but the collapsible stock. I just got the two. Um, two arms on both sides that slides in and out. It's super compact. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to be able to um, just get an SBR of it and and put a uh, suppressor on it instead of having that giant suppressor shroud. Yeah. Or get a K if they made it K version SBR with a side fold stock. That would be kind of cool too. Yes, it would. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's enough about H and K. Uh, Unless they'd like to be a sponsor, in which we'll <laughs> talk about them for a whole other hour. Um, next up, we have a, the Raven Concealment Top Stop, and uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Yeah, the these things are kind of. I just saw them a few weeks ago for the first time, and it was one of those things. It was like that's genius. Why didn't somebody else think of that a long time ago? It's a ten dollar little plastic cover that just slide, it basically snaps on the bottom of an AR upper. Uh, when you have it off of your lower. So it keeps dust and dirt from getting inside there and also keeps the guts from kind of halfway spilling out of your upper when you, if you tilt it or don't, if you put it in a pack or something like that, don't have it in a case. Uh, if you have a bolt carrier group and charging handle in an AR upper and tilt it backwards, uh, it, the bolt carrier will slide all the way out until it hits the, uh, the charging handle, um, which you won't lose anything probably, but it's kind of annoying. And, uh, for nine bucks, I'm gonna buy a bunch of these for all my spare uppers that I've got with that are kind of muzzled down in the safe, just so that this exact thing doesn't happen and keep me from having to put them all into Pelican cases to move them around. So, be cool. And like I said, they're cheap and one of those things. Like, why didn't somebody else come up with this? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, especially for those who uh, may only have one lower and multiple uppers. Um, so, uh, you know, your 300 blackout um, upper and your 223 upper, or if you have uh, variable lengths, um, so you have a more of a uh, M4 style 16 inch barrel and then switch to a more of a precision rifle, be uh, a good way to keep uh, dust and dirt out of there. So where's where, what about the uh, the um, bottom stop for your lower receiver? In case, yeah, uh, you get that's what you need next. Like, I guess exactly. that's what that's where Raven <laughs> Concealment needs to go. Is uh, but then you'd have the guy that's like trying to slam them together with both of them still on. Because I can see myself doing that with a top stop, like put the front pin in and then try and slam it closed and be like, why is this thing not working? Oh wait, <laughs> I got this thing on there still. 
So does it uh, does it stay in using those takedown pins? No, wait, no, those are on the lower receiver. Never mind. Yeah, does it, it looks does it interface like, with those holes at all. Uh, it looks like it actually covers the hole at least in the back. I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen one in person. I uh, I bought a couple of Raven concealment holsters, so I get their emails now. And this was like before Thanksgiving, they sent me an email with these pictures of this thing, and it looks like it just. Uh, like it snaps over somehow. It's probably fitted Kydex, I would imagine, that somehow yeah. is just, you stretch it and uh, snap it in. So it would be nice if uh, you were able to at least get the front takedown pin uh, in, so, um, you know, that way you, I don't know, if you could uh, do that as the first step and then pull the, the cover off and then slam down. And snap down together. The, yeah. Yeah. So, very cool. I know Raven Concealment makes some pretty neat holsters, and it's nice to see them um, taking the Kydex technology to alternate products. Yeah, exactly. And uh, something else I saw this week, The uh, actually, I know it's probably been out for a while. Uh, I saw it a little bit late. The Black Hawk Company, which I have been just exploding in uh, non-local gun stores. I mean, uh, Walmart... At least the couple Walmarts I go to, they have a dedicated Blackhawk shelf now, which just makes my heart uh, Twitter bait. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so they're they have got these um, discrete. They call them diversion workout or diversion bags, and there's several different varieties. There's kind of a workout bag that looks like a nondescript gym bag. Uh, it's black and it's got some uh, you know some red paneling on it. Um, but the uh, inside has uh, the um, design is to, to hold a rifle. So um, one of the ends on the back actually um, completely unzips, and you can pull your rifle out of the uh, out of the bag, or you could probably access it from the <coughs> top zipper as well. And they, I saw that they also have um, like tennis racket shaped cases and laptop cases uh, and kind of like the, the messenger bag uh, single sling um, and then there's also a very tall backpack that I guess would be like a, like a, a skateboarder's backpack, backpack. backpack. Yeah. yeah. These actually don't look like gun cases too for the first time because like lots of people have made like uh, low profile um, carry cases and stuff like that and then they're like coyote brown with molly loops and Velcro on them. And it's like everybody knows that that is dude. Done. like you're you're not you're not tricking anybody with your uh like just the fact that it's square and not rifle shaped doesn't mean that like if you throw your Molen Labe patch on it and strap your mag patches to the outside like everybody knows what it is. So yeah, the these actually look was, like gym bags and stuff. Yeah, the one I saw was like a, a small uh, tennis racket case shaped kind of like a tennis track, a little wider at the end, but then it was checkerboard, white and black, you know, stripes on it like the kids would carry it, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or like you the, could take your AR apart and put it in. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like a breakdown case. But, yeah. yeah, like the backpacks and stuff with the red or blue or whatever, like, it, it actually looks like somebody's backpack, not like, uh, you know, somebody's deployment bag that they just stuck a rifle in and carried it around. Yeah. I, w I would definitely like to um, hope that the um, design purpose behind these is just, uh, you know, if you've got your rifle in your car um, and you're going to the range and, and you've got to run inside and, and you don't want a, a rifle case sitting on the back seat of your car where somebody, a prowler, can, can look in and see, oh, well, that's definitely a rifle case and then, you know, Break in, whereas opposed to if you had a couple of these, uh, you know, racket ball or ra uh, tennis racket cases, you know, with your your favorite gun in them, that you know maybe they might get passed up. Um, yep. I can also see a possible um, unintended use where, um, I mean, if you wanted to basically conceal carry in a more of a devious fashion. Uh, um, so I'm 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 hoping that uh, they don't get used that way. Yeah, I'm always um, concerned going through the airport is, uh, like, I've had to fly with Pelican cases and stuff like that a lot, and this would be something I would use if they made a, something that looked like 
a guitar case maybe or something like that. Something hard so you could fly with it. But I always yeah. like every time I go to the bag and check out, I'm like, dude, somebody snagged my Pelican, I'm sure. Because they yeah. know that it's got expensive <laughs> guns in it. Like baggage goes missing all the time. So uh, I've been I've always been afraid of that. And if I could get something that didn't look like a gun case, uh, I would feel more comfortable about that at least. So yeah. I'm I'm just hoping that nobody with ill intent views these as a, a tool to like. I mean, of course, um, metal detectors are will be able to pick up any weapon inside of them. But say like they're walking to a bus stop or, or other place, yeah. and it's it's just it's nondescript. It's kind of like, I mean, when you see someone walking around with uh, 511 uh, pants, cargo <laughs> pants. I mean, it's a red flag. And so now I'm going to have to add to my kind of red flag radar. These uh, nondescript Blackhawk bags, yeah. just because it's. I like to know, you know, who's who's carrying around me and who's who's a good guy and who's not. And unfortunately, nobody wears their good guy badges on their <laughs> sleeves. So, um, cool product for someone who, uh, you know, is 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 traveling and they have uh, a heart of gold and they just don't want to have their favorite firearms ripped off. Yeah. So. <clears throat> you think it's a uh, you think it's a good idea, Tony? Yeah, it's a good idea. If you, you, I, uh, you know, where I live, I don't have to worry about it so much, but I can see it being used a lot. You live in one of the parts of the country where you just leave your your doors on un- unlocked because you know everyone knows each other. Well, we used to up to about ten years ago, and now we lock the doors, but. Uh, yeah, it's a real low crime area. Nothing really goes on here. Yeah. They were around us every now and then, you know, there'll be some break ins, but not very often. So, uh, you guys did some um, reviews for the Firearms Insider, and I'd like to talk about those because there's some really good reviews here. Sure. Um, so, Derek, you reviewed the Six Sour. P938. Yeah, this is actually uh, my wife is awesome, and it's my wedding present. We got married in August. She uh, she got me this um, Sig P938 uh, as a new uh, backup gun. I've been looking for a micro nine um, nine millimeter for a while. Uh, I was using either a Keltec P380 or a uh, Smith and Wesson 942 as a backup gun. I carry a, a Colt Combat Commander. Um, as my normal carry gun. Um, and I wanted something different, and I really didn't like many of the micro nines that were coming out until I saw this. And I was like, I need to have one, but it's expensive. And luckily she got one for me. But um, it's one of the smaller 1911s out there for sure, or like smaller 9mm pistols uh, that you can get. It's not quite as small as the... Um, Nano, the Beretta Nano, or uh, I think the a what is it? Uh, the Kimber uh, Solo is a little bit thinner, but it's very small. And one of the big things I really liked about this was uh, that it comes straight out of the box with like real sights, legitimate, actual yeah. full size night sights, um, vice. Uh, like my Smith and my Keltec both had just a, like a trench and a bump sight, which are junk, uh, and I never really went to replace any of that kind of stuff. And a lot of the micro nines are coming out with uh, little tiny sights, or they're you know a black sight you're going to have to get replaced anyway. So the fact these came with uh, Sig night sights straight out the box uh, was one of the biggest things I really liked. Plus, it's the probably the biggest thing is it's a single action. It's a true single action. Um, 1911 style controls. It's ambidextrous uh, safety selector, um, but it's uh, it's about a seven pound pull, which is a little heavy. But it's like I think my Keltec was like 11 and a half, uh, and my Smith is about that as well, um, both double actions. So and if, as far as I'm aware, this is the only real uh, single action micro nine millimeter that's out there. Um, and it's a very crisp trigger. It's kind of heavy, but it's uh, it's very, it's like you know the proverbial glass rod break. At least in mine. Um, plus, I put a lot of rounds through it already, so it's probably kind of smoothed out a little bit. Um, 
as far as like target market for these kind of things, uh, anybody that's looking for a really good concealed carry gun, if you don't want to carry something full size, I'm weird and uh, I kind of fall under Clint Smith. Always said like uh, carrying a gun supposed to be uh, comforting, not comfortable. So I'll, I carried I carried a five inch 1911 um, until about a year ago, and I built my own uh, commander size. But I'll carry that and three spare mags and a flashlight and all that kind of cool stuff just because. I feel like I should. So um, I don't really care about going to something real small, but I uh, I wanted, like I said, a backup gun or something like if I had to carry something smaller, um, I wasn't digging the 380 and the 38 Special. So anybody that wants something that's a small 9mm, this is probably one of your best choices. Uh, and if you carry a 1911 like I do as a primary gun, as a backup gun, it's pretty awesome because all of your manual of arms and all that kind of stuff stay the same. Um, you're not trying to remember, do I flip the safety up or down or, you know, your trigger pull kind of feels the same, um, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, yeah, I pretty big benefits. Man. Just that if, up, man. Oh, yeah. Those are, I've, I've heard good and bad about the PF9s. Some guys really like them and some guys really dislike them. Well, I don't really like it, uh, but the uh, it's small. Uh, so, but that right there is what I want is the uh, 938. I went and played with one at the gun shop the other day. I really liked it. The safety yeah. was harder to get on with one hand. Uh, it comes off easy, but it's harder to put on. I couldn't hardly put it on with my thumb. Can you? Yeah, you've you've got to kind of. Like well, if I'm here, I gotta kind of twist the gun a little bit to thumb it back up, but yeah. it's not a whole lot. I want, I really want just a strong side safety. I'm not a fan of ambies. I can reach around with my left thumb if I need to, um, and if I get a strong side, I'm gonna get an ext a slightly extended lever so I can do that. Um, I haven't yeah. found anybody that's making a strong side only for it yet. Um, yeah, a lot of people like the fact that it's ambidextrous, but uh, I don't really care. Like I said, I shoot my normal 1911 left-handed a lot. Just reach around with the left thumb to, to flip the uh, safety off. Um, yeah, it's seven plus or six plus one from the factory. Uh, you can get a little pinky extender magazines to make them seven plus one, so you get a bit of a ammunition advantage over some of the others, uh, some of the other micro nines, and some of the uh, like over my Keltec or my Smith. Um, and then there's like ten versions of this thing. Uh, yeah. Any finish that you want, um, any kind of grips, all that kind of stuff. They make all black. Mine is the uh, black aluminum frame, and uh, it's like a satin steel slide. I think they call it natural steel, but they have the all black ones. They've got an Equinox with the uh, shiny nitride finish and all that kind of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that. I want the single action. I, w I got Glocks and the... Uh, about the new SIG 256 single action only that came out last shot so oh yeah and uh, I really like it but I wanted a single stack 9 millimeter with a single action trigger and I couldn't you know in 1911 the only people that makes one that will run is Wilson or somebody that you know three grand and I can't afford that so yeah I, I went for the SIG I really <coughs> like it, it so far, it's doing good. Yeah, I've got a. You say it's a 226, right? They made that with the it's a 226 the Elite single action only. Yeah, yeah. I've got a standard a, 226, and it shoots great. But um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of DASA. This one's got the uh, X5 frame. It's already milled out for the jet funnel, and it's got a regular 226 top on it. Oh, cool. So it's got the undercut trigger guard like the two yep. or the X fives, you know, the competition guns. Yep. And the safeties is the same as the competition guns. It's it's a I really like it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, how's the uh, the holster availability for the the P nine thirty eight? There's a there's a number of things out there. Um, I've seen a handful of guy of like I think Galco is making one. I think Bianchi's making one. Um, 
that are like the mini scabbard. I think Galco makes a mini scabbard. I've seen a number of those. I've seen a couple of inside the waistbands um, from the same kind of guys. Um, I haven't found anything Kydex yet, but I actually gave my gun to a guy here in Jacksonville that uh, makes Kydex holsters, and he took a cast of it not too long ago and is making me um, a Kydex inside slash outside Kydex holster um, with a little reversible uh, clip, basically, to uh, to be able to swap it around from left-handed to right-handed. So um, if you can find some place, there's a lot of... I've found that no matter where I go, there's somebody within like 20 minutes that makes custom Kydex holsters, whether they advertise or not kind of thing. Like the guy that's making mine is just a, a dude I met at the range. I was like, hey, that's, yeah. is, that a, is that a Raven concealment holster? Because it looked just like my Raven. He's like, no, I made this. I was like, oh, really? Can you make anything? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, what would it cost me to get one of these? Ah, 25 bucks. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I make my own too. Yeah, a lot, a lot of guys do it, so... Really um, easy. Yeah, I've found a few. Actually, right now, this is kind of weird, but I've got... Where did I drop it? I, I don't know where I threw it, but I'm actually carrying it now in a uh, Galco um, officer model uh, inside the waistband holster, and it fits it fine, which is kind of weird because it's not yeah. as thick or quite as long either. But it uh, it's a soft leather holster, so it kind of compresses like a pancake holster. And it kind of compresses around it, and it fits it fine. And I had—I thought I had it on, but I dropped it earlier. I'm I not like sure those sticky holsters. Yeah, yeah, like a remora. Sticky holsters. Well, the remora—I don't—I don't know. The remora is that the one that goes in your back pocket? No, I think. Well, I think they make one of those, but I think remora makes just the sticky, the like it's a tacky material on the outside that you can just yeah. stick in your waistband. Yeah, I use my. That PF9 and in, in it, and it's very comfortable, you know, and you can draw right out of it, leave the holster stuck to you, you know. It's yeah. Yeah. Very, some I mean, of those. Easy to take on and off, you know. Yeah, some of those one size fits all things would probably work pretty well for this. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of those out there. A lot of the pocket holsters. Um, I know DeSantis makes a pocket holster that's uh, for the small framed autos that would probably work pretty well. But yeah. I read a few reviews on these, uh, but they were for guns that had just come out, like pre-production, actually. Um, I had a couple of complaints about trigger weight and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of people said it was ugly, because the first ones that came out were the Nightmare, which is the all-black variant. Um, but I didn't really care if it was ugly, and I figured I can fix a gritty trigger just by shooting it a lot. So, um, Yeah. Shot it at, uh, I've put about a thousand rounds through it so far um, in the last four months or so, just to make sure that it really runs before I start carrying it, I started carrying it around. Um, I had a couple malfunctions right at the beginning, like within the first couple of magazines. Uh, and then I just relubricated it and it was fine. So it's run, I think I've gone like 980 rounds without, uh, without a malfunction, so I started carrying it after that. Um, yeah. And most of it was hand-loaded ammo, so no problems with that stuff. And then at it, I shot it out of the way out to at seven yards. I'm holding about three inches, uh, probably two, um, and then uh, opened up to about a ten-inch group, eight-inch, eight to ten at 25 yards. So I feel like that's pretty good for a two-inch barrel, essentially. Um, sides are good. Yeah. And a better trigger than most of the little nines. So, very cool. So, Tony, you said you make your own uh, Kydex holsters as well. Yeah, I make the uh, hybrid holster. The you know the leather and the Kydex inside the waistband. Nice. Yeah. I was thinking you should uh, maybe do like a do-it-yourself review on the uh, Gun and Gears review website, um, so other people can kind of see. How it's done, unless you want to just uh, review one that you've made and then put your contact information and make a little make a little change. I was gonna say yeah. proprietary information <laughs> right there. You're trying to get trade yeah. secrets. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, do you just buy bulk Kydex or do you buy the kits to do that stuff? I buy just the sheet uh, sheet Kydex and then I buy the uh, leather at uh, Trade Day. Oh, okay. The flea market, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
And then, you know, I mean, it's easy to make a pattern. You know, everybody uses pretty much the same pattern, you know, crossbreed and all those. I mean, it's just a piece of leather with a piece of Kydex, you know. Uh, you're not really stealing any trade secrets on that. But, yeah. Uh, you know, you just heat the Kydex up in the oven, you know, 300 degrees, take it out, and it's like rubber, you know, real flimsy rubber, and sandwich it between two pieces of a uh, heavy foam and it uh, just molds right to the gun. Hmm. I'm gonna have to give that a shot. If, yeah, if I can convince my wife it won't ruin the oven. Oh it won't. You can buy a ten dollar toaster oven at a yard sale and use yeah. that. Yeah that yep. actually and then I can just you put can it keep in, that in your room. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to do and then if if it don't form exactly to the gun like you want it, you can take a I, I use a heat gun. You can pick those up at the hardware store, but you can use a hair dryer. Sure. And uh, it just take a little longer with a hair dryer, but you can uh, heat it up, you know, and take a piece of rounded off wood and and push into like the uh, uh, opening, the barrel opening. Uh huh. There's a word for that, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> Muzzle bore. Yeah. 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 I just push it down in there, and that's that's your retention. That and the trigger guard and. And the one I made is this gun has got a light on it, so I had to. Uh, I made it retain around that light too. <coughs> it holds in there pretty good. Yeah, that's that's cool. Especially you know when you put a, a light on there, unless you've got like a one of the most popular light models like a a Streamlight or Enforce. I mean sometimes it's hard to find a holster that'll accommodate your light. So to be able to make your own and mold it exactly. Uh, to your yeah. own light, whether it's one of those Walmart models or, you know, a Streamlight or any one of those big names, uh, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah, yeah. that is cool. I've got to try that's that. That's why you, you know, there's. I searched a lot of holster companies. I was one outside the waistband holster for it, and the only company that made one was X Concealment Holsters, and they're, uh, they had one with that light on it for this gun that fit just right. Man, it was. It's, I like it. It's the inside or outside the waistband, fully Kydex holster. Uh, I don't, I don't know who if anybody else makes one of those like that or not. Very cool. So uh, to finish up talking about your review, Derek, you sure. gave it a uh, that Sig a seven point five. Yeah, I had a, I had my biggest complaint is. Uh, I have big hands, and when I do grab onto it, if since it is an AMB safety, if I go to push, you can't even see the safety because my hand's too big. But if I, when I go to push down the safety with the strong side, my it will catch the web of my hand inside, like just in this little gap below the safety, and it is incredibly painful and very distracting when I'm trying to get on fast. So, like I said, that was one of my biggest things. Is like it will definitely grab your hand if you have big hands like I do. And, that's uh, this why is, you're wanting the strong side safety only. Exactly. Right? I, that's yeah. why I want to go strong side only and uh, and just get rid of that entirely. And then uh, the first time that I took it out and shot it, um, like I said, I had a couple of malfunctions, and the grip screws all started to work their way out after about 20 rounds or so. Yeah. So pull them out, Loctite. put a little, little blued Loctite on it, tighten it back down, and it hasn't had an issue since then. Um, but that was really the only the only problems that I had. Uh, so if they fix that stuff, uh, I'd go higher than that. But as of right now, and I'm kind of like a harsh grader, so I'll go 7.5. <laughs> hey, we don't, like we don't give out freebies here, so I'm gonna have one. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, jumping back to um, Kydex, uh, Tony, you did a review on a uh, mag holder. Uh, is that made out of Kydex as well? Yes. It, well, yeah. No, no, no. It's not Kydex. It's an <sighs> injected, molded, uh, well, reinforced plastic. Okay. I almost had a perfect segue. But uh, <laughs> so go ahead and tell us about that mag modest. holder. It's not a formed <laughs> piece. Yeah. Well, it looks pretty cool. Tell us about it. Do what? <laughs> I think we're losing him. So, well, is it plastic? The, uh, is it just so? It's just holder? plastic. It's not Kydex. But it's not Kydex. It's in, it. Have you got me? Yep. Okay. 
It's plastic. It's injected. Yeah, we hear you. Plastic. Okay. I, I didn't think you heard me the first time. Uh, it's very simple. It's light and it's small. And the best thing is, like, you with your uh, 938 yep. of your six rounds, not only do you need more ammo with you, but, I mean, you know, when the magazine, most of the time when you have a failure, it's a magazine problem. So if you don't have an extra magazine and you've got a six-round gun and you have a problem, you're going to have to try to fix it and, and retain the magazine, you know, at the same time. It's just a good idea to have a... a, a extra magazine and this this way you can carry it horizontally and you don't have to get po poked in your side when you bend over uh, you know and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys with duty belts go into horizontal mounted magazines for that reason. Um, so that's kind of cool that somebody's making a concealment version because you don't really see that a whole lot nowadays with like my mag patches that I carry for my 1911 are inside the waistband just straight vertical ones. And yeah. obviously inside the waistband is not going to work with a horizontal, but if I'm wearing a cover garment, something like that would definitely be more comfortable. And he makes some special stuff to where you can get two of these, and they're mounted on a piece of leather, and you can put them on molly straps, and he does a lot for SWAT uh, out in his area. Yeah, that's so they can cool. mount them upside down like this and yank it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's on his website. You'd have to contact him to get that done. But how do they make different sizes, like lengths? Because I, I am looking for mag pouches for that Sig. Uh, right now, I'm just pocket carrying a second second mag, but it's short. Obviously, the magazine is only that right. long. So no, well, see, this is not long. Your magazine will stick out of this, and the ones for the single stack magazines. I don't have one for the single stack, but I know they are different. But he has them for the for that 938, all single okay. stacks, you know. Yeah, because that's a that's a standard 1911 mag, and this is the 938, so it's obviously right. it's, it's way shorter. See, I don't know how much that is. Probably an inch, probably two inches. It's probably two inches long. Okay, yeah. So I'd get about a three quarters of an inch out of it to be able to grab hold of it at least. Yeah, yeah, that would be really concealed them. One of those small magazines, you know. Yeah. And you know, it's got good retention. <clears throat> I believe it's built good, you know. I don't think it's going to come apart. This is probably the third variation of the plastic that he's using. Uh, it holds its shape. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if it being just injection molded plastic, if you're sitting on it all the time, if you're going to crack it or rip no. the. Uh, the loops off the back or something. You could run over it with your car. I don't believe it would bust. Oh, there you go. It's uh, it's reinforced. You know, it's kind of like the glass field. Uh, what uh, Ruger calls it a glass field nylon. I think. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. It's that type <clears throat> of material. Uh, it's very strong. Uh, and it's it's rigid. You put it on. And it don't move on your belt either. Huh. On the back side of it, it's got some little dimples uh, for traction on your pants. You know, your belt pulling against it on your pants. Gotcha. And it, you know, you have to purposely m move it on your belt. Do they make different belt loop sizes? Like if you go from a one and a quarter inch belt or whatever it is to a two inch belt, and so you got to attach that. all that stuff. Yeah, I think that. I had never measured it, to be honest with you. Maybe maybe a one and three quarter inch belt. It might hold a two inch belt. Okay. I think I think my belts are one and three quarters. And it I believe it was enough room for a two inch belt. But it you can see, I don't know if you can see how it pinches up. Yep. See that. But it it's got a good lip on this bottom side, bottom corner. So you don't rip it off the top either. Right, so it won't come out. You have to, I mean, it, you have to work to get it off your belt. And you can carry it on on the strong side, weak side, upside down, you know, however, however you want to. He has left hand and right hand versions of it. Huh. 
I was watching the uh, the video on the website magholder.com on yeah. the about page. There's a kind of a, a minute, uh, minute and a half video of just someone shooting two rounds and then uh, dropping the magazine and reaching for their uh, mag holder. It looks very fluid as far as instead of reaching your hand down, grabbing the magazine and then pulling up and then into your weapons magwell, you just kind of slide your hand across. It's just kind of more of a fluid movement. Um, definitely, I think, uh, for three-gun shooters, it would be advantageous as far as speeding up your reload time. Yeah, it's just belt space is all you're looking at then because you're taking up twice the space for uh, for one of those vice uh, a vertical back pouch. Yeah, it, exactly. yeah it will if take it, up more space. It's a low round count round, maybe. Um, yeah, exactly. I know I've been on on one where it's like, okay, this is a hundred and fifty round uh, <laughs> stage uh, course. Yeah, stage. So you can have a hundred rounds loaded in magazines at one time, and or uh, thirty rounds loaded at one time, and no, no, the other way. A hundred rounds loaded at one time, and then like the remaining thirty, you had to have kind of in a dump bag and then load magazines while you're running. Um, I have never so, tried. I haven't tried that one yet, but that sounds like somebody was just messing with you at the uh, whoever this it, the, yeah. Oh, yeah whoever was setting up stages decided to just screw with everybody for a day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I listen to a lot of different podcasts, fun, though, and you can tell the the everyone's. I think we're walking on each other now. What was that? Go ahead, Tony. I'll let you. Okay, I was wondering if I froze up. Uh, I heard about uh, Mark on another podcast, uh, and uh, those guys talked highly about it, so I bought one. And uh, that was, I don't know, maybe a year ago. He just had started, and uh, uh, oh, this is the... This one's for the SIG, and it has ribs on the inside of it. You probably can't see them. But the one for the Glock, it doesn't. I don't believe it has the ribs in it. And in the single stack, it has a, a spacer built in it for the to re, the reduced size of the magazine. Okay. How much do those cost per? $25. Oh, that's not so bad. No, it's, it's not bad. Uh, there's not, I and think there's only two places on, uh, you can get them. <clears throat> so shop.magholder.com would be the direct retail from the uh, from the uh, the manufacturer. Um, I'm seeing Concealment Solutions as uh, Jason selling these two. Are they coming from there? Or is yeah, that... he is. Yeah, uh, so he's making uh, some of the special ones with the uh, uh, with the uh, leather, the two on a piece of leather. Gotcha. He's doing a lot of that. Yeah, cool. you can get them through Jason or through uh, Mark's website. Very nice. So uh, you gave those a a nine point oh rating. You carry concealed. You need to carry a extra mag. Absolutely. Yeah, you, I mean, how do you fault it? You need a magazine. You need an extra magazine. You need to carry one. And, you know, if it's not comfortable, most people are just not going to carry it. And this, I believe, is the most comfortable extra mag Yeah, and most guys I know just throw them in the pocket, which is not ideal for a lot of reasons. But that's just my opinion. But <laughs> I carry one all the time, and uh, once you put it down, so. very cool. But yeah, give it a shot. Yeah, I might have to try one out. I get one for the Sig and see how it works. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll I'll have to get one for my uh, my Glock 19. I saw that they um, they are in the process of developing. Uh, double stack models for larger <coughs> calibers. 
me get back to their website and see that real quick. Uh, That's for the 45. So there's, yeah, 45 and 45. See, stuff like that, he probably. makes them for the 9 and the 40 now. Yeah. The What is that big uh, FNP or... Yeah, the FN45, the FN, the FNP45 FN tactical yeah. and all that stuff, or the Glock 30 or something like that. Springfield yeah. XD, XD, XD yeah. Yeah. So the, the ETA on that is uh, January yep. 2014. So well, actually, it's just uh, a couple months away. Yeah. So very cool. Thanks for that review, Tony. I think. Uh, I'm definitely looking, gonna see if about picking one up. I think you might have convinced quite a few others too. Yeah, it's well worth the twenty five bucks, you know. So, absolutely. I mean, we've all spent twenty five dollars on something a lot less practical. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, next up, I uh, like to talk about one of my reviews that I've done. It's the uh, Firefield Micro Reflex Sight. Um, I was basically looking for a small micro sight um, that would go on my my. Oh, I lost him. Yeah, I did too. I yeah, got you. Up. Hopefully, he comes back here soon. I thought it was me. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. We lost you there. I can see you, but I got no audio. I have unmuted myself. I am back. Okay, there we go. All right. Good? Tracking. Okay. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So back to what I was saying, um, reviewing a um, Firefield <coughs> Micro Reflex site. I wanted to get a small red dot for my uh, my 22 pistol, so this is a um, Ruger uh, Mark III with a uh, pack light 22 uh, barrel on there. Do you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, so it's it's a, a compact, um, probably only about uh, sits less than an inch off the barrel as far as where the, the, di the dot is aligned. Yeah. Um, Picatinny, it has uh, two brightness settings. Um, it is clear and there is no magazine. Do these gun reviews right? Um, so it uh, has a little switch in the back so there's two dimness <coughs> settings basically. Um, let's see here. All right, yeah, there's I got it. Yep. the yep. standard, and then I'll switch it over to the uh, the brighter, so it gives a lot hotter dot. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's haloing out inside, so but outside that probably works pretty well in daylight. Yeah. Um. So I was I have I've got some cheap red dots I bought on Amazon.com, and they're good, but they actually the uh, the window sits rather high on the firearm, so probably more like up here. Mm -hmm. and it, just, it felt very unnatural having to kind of hold the pistol, you know, an inch lower than my eye line. Sure. So I wanted to get a, an affordable option, especially because, um, you know, a Trujigan RMR, or a Burst right. Fast Fire, each of those is going to range from 300 to 400, even maybe even higher. Yeah. Um, so this... Uh, the, yeah, yeah, like an aim point T1 is almost 600 and 650, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, so these firefields, I actually I was, were the cheapest I could find that um, I had some confidence um, based on just initial impression of their their marketing. Um, I mean, if someone's got good graphics, I tend to give them a little bit of a better of a doubt just because I'm a graphic designer. So if your marketing material's good, I'm almost <laughs> I'm about 80, 90 percent convinced of your product until I actually get it. Um, so I put this on my 22. This is actually the second. One that I've gotten because the first one I had to send back uh, for yeah. a uh, warranty replacement. There goes your so, marketing. Uh... <laughs> my my theory fell out. Yeah, on that exactly. One. So basically, uh, what had happened is you know it sighted again about 10, 20 rounds. It stopped functioning, and so I'm I'm kind of flickering through the settings, trying to find the um, the dot. You know. Uh, and it wasn't turning on, so um, you know I unscrewed the top, 
with uh, you know the Allens that they provide you. They actually give you quite a bit of tools. There you go. Yeah. Got an Allen yeah. of those two top screws. Uh, take it apart. It's got one of those standard uh, CR two zero three two watch bottles. Yeah. yeah. Watch batteries. Um, so I, I they they give you a couple replacements. Um, they've got um, some kind of uh, Korean or uh, Japanese markings on them. I tried the different batteries and it still didn't make a difference. So I had to send the site back and they it took a long time, probably about a couple months. I actually forgot about it um, to get this back because um, the, the the company site site mark is like the parent company of Firefield, their sister company. So um, basically, I had to my my um, request for a new site was kind of in the queue of like the whole company. Jeez. So yeah, I was kind of in line um, about it, but it, it came back and it's been functioning okay. Of course, um, I want to knock on wood there because uh, it seems like last time I took it out, it was about 10 degrees and it was acting a little funny. As far as yeah. flickering on and off, um, but I'm going to attribute that to the cold weather. Yep. Um, so just playing around with it inside here, uh, it's working fine. Um, I, when I do the 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 switch in the back, if you don't, it's got positive detents as to uh, dim and then brighter. If you're kind of slow and you kind of rock it in between those two, like you know you're not supposed to do on like an actual light switch. Yep. Um, it does flicker on and off, so you just got to make sure that you're doing that positively. You don't want to short anything. Sure. Um, but so far, it's been pretty good. Zeroing, it's held zero. I shoot this uh, suppressed quite often, and it is uh, really cool. It's yeah. kind of like a, just a, a tactical uh, plinker. Yeah. Um, it doesn't co-witness with um, the iron sights, but that will be really difficult to do on these pistols because the iron sights are so low to the border. Yeah. Yeah. Um so you can't expect that, but uh it's been pretty good. I've I've haven't tried it on any uh larger calibers cuz I'm afraid of, you know, pushing my luck and it uh dying yeah. again. Yeah. I've seen a video on YouTube where someone shot their I think it was a 930 or uh maybe it was just an 870. It was a pump shotgun 12 gauge. Okay. So yeah, it would have been the 870. Um and they shot and supposedly <coughs> it it kept firing, but I know the recoil on the shotgun is Way different. Pretty substantial compared to that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so I'm not gonna try it on on my 930. But so far, for just a a cheap uh, pistol micro sight, I mean, I think you can't go wrong. I know Weaver is actually entering the market, and I haven't tried them. They're about last I saw at the local store, eighty dollars for the Weaver micro sight. Um, this Firefield was actually uh, forty nine. I believe, um, and you can. It's very limited on where you can get it. Um, ironically enough, scary enough. Uh, Facebook little ads on the side <laughs> had this now on there. It was an ad through Wayfair. Yeah, Wayfair is the name of the company. So they knew uh, my hobby, and they knew I like red dot sites. And it was on there for probably about three months, and I was just ignoring it because I'm like, well, you know, screw you, trying to advertise my interests. Um, <laughs> I used to... I but cheat. then finally when I started thinking, yeah, I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Maybe that... Uh, I'll take it out. So it was actually out of stock for a long time, so I just ignored it, and then <laughs> six months later that ad was still there. Yeah. Um, so I clicked on it, and then it was available. So I actually only paid $50 and some change from Wayfair.com, shipped pretty quickly. Um, it came with a nice uh, kit. Um, the only, my complaints are there are no up, down, left, right, elevation, and windage uh, markings on the body. Yeah. So when you're trying to zero this thing in, um, it gives you a kind of like a little pinwheel. It's a circle that's got a, a, a grid on there that tells you, you know, this way is left, this way is right, this way is up, this way is down. So, um, and it came with a little screwdriver, and I think what you're supposed to do is kind of the screwdriver and this little circular guide kind of become really good friends, and you shove that screwdriver through it, um, and so then when you're turning these adjustment screws on the back of the pistol, um, you kind of have a guide. Okay, I'm turning clockwise for right, turning gotcha. uh, counterclockwise for uh, down. 
Um, so after that was done, um, it's worked pretty good. It came with a, a, a plastic housing. Um, I know a lot of micro dot sites actually they don't have an off on off. Does function. it turn it off? Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, um, great minds think alike. So there's quite a few sites that are actually automatically turned on when you remove the cap because there's a, a photo cell that picks up the light. Um, the only problem is that what if you want to shoot at night and there's no light, uh, your red dot, uh, either there's a manual switch or it just wouldn't turn on. Um, so I wanted something that definitely had a manual on-off switch. So it just comes with a nice cap to keep the, the lens clean, um, which uh, I was trying to figure out a way to have um, kind of clip it to the site with a, a tether, um, but I already lost it, so... Um, it's a good thing that's it's not dependent on that to, to turn <laughs> off because I've yeah. already lost the cover. Um, yeah, so I would say that if you're definitely looking for something that looks like a an RMR or a fast fire, um, but you don't want to spend that kind of money for you know 50 bucks, you can try this and and it should work out pretty well for a 22 pistol, a Buckmark, uh, or a um, you know a Ruger series. As long as you've got, I think it'll still work for a Weaver, a Weaver uh, whale, Rail as well as Picatinny. Uh, give it a shot. I mean, um, Wayfair's got a pretty good, I think there's a warranty, so if something bad happens, you can send it back. It was pretty painless. It was just the weight that was a bother, but, um, you know, if you're an NFA tax stamp collector, you're kind of used to the weight, so I just yeah. add a sight out of mind. Um, so, yeah, I think it was, it was, it's pretty nice. Uh, you know, I'm into finding the best uh, products for the lowest amount of money because I am still of the cheap uh, college student mentality. Even though I've graduated from college for you know, four years ago, I've still got that. Um, you know, I want the best product, and I want to spend almost no money on it. I'm sure we're all like that. Yeah. Have you seen the primary arms micro red dots? No, actually, I have not. Let me. There. They had a Christmas like Black Friday special, and I got one for sixty bucks. But they're I think they're normally eighty. It looks like a an Aimpoint uh, Micro T1 or H1 kinda. It's in that same size range, um, and I know a lot of guys that are running them on uh, forty five degree yeah. offsets because they didn't want to send six hundred bucks for a T1 uh, as a like mm -hmm. third sighting system. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never had out of the four or five guys I know that have them. None of them had any problems, and they're all getting shot on five, five, sixes, and ones on a three hundred eight. So they haven't had any problems with them getting rattled loose or any, or you know, breaking circuitry or anything like that from recoil. Um, so I figured I'd grab one up for sixty dollars. But like I'm looking now, and uh, they're eighty dollars is their normal price. So not bad. And like I said, I've heard lots of. I think lots Bushnell. Of good it, I think Bushnell has one at Walmart for like one twenty nine. Yeah, that's about as cheap as those go, and that's like um, yeah. the Vortex Spark is right in about that range as well. Normally about one fifty, and that's kind of a step up. But yeah, I've got a Spark. Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, so far. I mean, I don't shoot as much as you do, but uh, yeah, I, I like it. You know, for the money. Uh, it does a good job. It, I mean, it works. You know, I've heard a lot of people uh, have to send them back, you know, and once they send it back and got the replacement, they hadn't had any trouble with it. So Yeah. Vortex has come a long way lately. They um, got good glass in some of their optics. Oh, yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to shoot it with the uh, staff and CUIC of the um, Scout Sniper School, the Marine Corps Scout Sniper Program. And he actually, in his off time, is a competitive shooter, and Vortex is one of his sponsors. Uh, yeah. and he, he had a couple of his guns out with uh, their optics on them, and we got to play around with them, and they were pretty nice. Um, and for the same thing that you're getting from them, you know, a loop old's costing you two to three times the price. And, I've got uh, a Mark IV. Yeah. Uh, it's a LRT. Yep. Uh, the Coyote Gray. It's a military scope. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's what we... We had those I really like it, but the, yeah, it come off of a uh, 308 AR. It's got the dial reticle. I mean, the turret caps are marked for the yeah, yeah for the. <laughs> it actually says government on the bottom of it. 
<laughs> we're gonna we're gonna assume it was Dermode and sold properly. Uh, but uh, it's uh, not always how that you know, goes. No, it's an eighteen hundred dollar scope. Yeah, uh, I didn't give um, <clears throat> nearly that for it. But. One of my buddies was in Fayetteville up by Fort Bragg not too long ago, and there was a guy selling um, ACOGs for four hundred bucks. So he bought all of them because they're actual <laughs> Trigicon ACOGs. Yeah, so I think he yeah. got four of them for for twelve hundred dollars. Or no, four four wow. of them for sixteen hundred bucks. And I was like, well, that's the price of one. So if you sell two or yeah. three of them, then you, yours is free. So, yeah, that's and, a good uh, deal. But I'm pretty sure those probably belong to the army. Uh, I would guess. So. Well, the guy I got mine from, uh, they're legal. He's got uh, aim points. Uh, he's got EOTech and those Mark fours. <coughs> yeah, you see a lot. Uh, he of said stuff. they were legal. Yeah, we uh, we replaced all the Mark IVs, at least the Marine Corps did. I think all of them with um, Schmidt and Benders not too long ago. So I'm sure those all got sold off to somebody. So yeah. some wholesaler probably snapped them all up from the government and is reselling them now. But yeah. I can't afford a Schmidt and Bender, so I think I'm going Vortex. No, I Me think the, <laughs> the optic we're running now. If, if I remember right, the last time I looked it up, it was about four grand for yeah. a scope. So. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I've actually been looking at a uh, getting a uh, variable low power scope for my uh, three gun AR. Yep. So uh, man, <coughs> they uh, they just started selling ACOGs at my local Ace Hardware, um, and you know they're about the average price. They're not screaming deals or anything, but didn't actually hold one and look through it and like look at the other end of the store. It's like, oh man, this would be so much fun. Yep. So crisp, I just couldn't believe it. Before yeah. you buy one of those, <clears throat> if you go to the uh, it's a podcast. Uh, I can't remember it now. He done a review on like six, one to four to one to six power three gun scopes. Yeah. Uh, wow, I can't even think of the name of it. But anyway, he uh, some Is of them 200 the bucks and some of them no, he's a uh... wow. No, I can't even get to my phone or I would look. The Power Factor Show, that's it. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but he done a, a good review, uh, and he showed through them outside, you know, and showed the difference. And one, some one of them was like a one and a half to five. Uh, but he. Some of them was uh, he had a uh, Swarovski. It was like twenty eight hundred bucks, you know. Yep, that's <laughs> and, how they are. Uh, then he had a two hundred dollar scope. It was a one to five. And all of them were lighted red dots too. Yeah, I said uh, I started with a millet that was about that. I think two fifty, and it yeah. worked all right. But uh, it was just it was heavy. It was like but with that in a Burris pepper mount was like four pounds. So wow. I had to get rid of that thing. Yeah, um, and I swapped out for a loophole one to six power that was way more than two hundred fifty bucks, but it's way better. Yeah, than yeah. some normal worn rings, so that's not crazy heavy. I was yeah. actually looking at the uh, the Vortex option. They make a one to four and a one to six. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for half the cost, and I already <coughs> got a couple of Vortex. I know they're good, and that's at uh, one of the local gun shops. There's an over the counter warranty where. I mean, you can buy one, go out in the parking lot, beat it with a hammer, walk back in, set it on the counter, and uh, I mean, if it obviously has some damage to it, they'll just hand you a new one, and they'll handle all the uh, the warranty replacement on their own. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, my only thing is, uh, I mean, I've got okay eyesight. Obviously, I gotta wear glasses, but those uh, those um, markings on those sites are just so stinking fine that. The the ACOGs, uh, you know, that I'm reading the, the reticle. Yeah. yeah, the reticle, the numbers. I mean, it's just I'm feeling like I'm taking an eye test when I'm looking yeah. at it. I'm like, e you almost just gotta four. memorize it. Yeah. yeah, I'm not really a fan of the ACOG. I love it. We that became to like it's uh that is is assigned to every weapon now. So like I, my Marines that I'm getting now, which blows my mind because I came in eight years ago and they we shot with iron sights but they've yeah. never shot the m16 with iron sights before 
because now it's the the ACOG is so durable that they're like, well, it'll probably never break. So uh, yeah. they just put an ACOG on every every M16, every M4 gets one. And like I've ne- I have Marines now that have only qualified with the ACOG and don't even know how to use irons, which blows my mind. But uh, but yeah, they they're awesome. And once you figure out that siding system, it's uh it's pretty impressive just to see some dude that like has never shot before. And in four days we've got him hitting man sized targets at 500 yards every time with an yeah, M16. That's good. So, yeah. Um, that's just how it is. Like, yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. impressive. Well, I know I, I put the ACOG on my, my wish <coughs> list for the, the uh, gun and gear reviews. What I'd like, uh, Mike Emmert to, to track down and, and send to me. But uh, if there's anyone out there that's got an extra ACOG laying around that, uh, is willing to loan it out for T and E. Um, I'm a good guy. You will get it back. Uh, you know, and it'll probably be in better condition as far as I'll shine it up real good. Actually, um, I've got one you could probably T and E. One of those ones that guy bought. So I'll probably send yeah, you. Yeah, I'd I'd love to. I'd love to. I've got a 20 inch uh, build that um, is dying for an optic, and I'd love to test it out. I've got. Uh, you know, a full uh, 100 to 600 yard range. Um, I like to test it quite thoroughly and take some video and put it up on the website. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'll yeah, give me one. Cool. Like I said, he's got a couple now, and uh, he's he's going to the field for a couple of weeks or pretty soon. So he'll probably give it to me before he leaves. So easy. Yeah, that'd be great. So I mean, uh, back to my just wrap up the review that I, of the micro dot before we get too far <coughs> off on a tangent and I start drooling here. <laughs> uh, I gave that Firefield a 6.5 just because I had to take it, uh, send it in for replacement once. Um, you know, it is made in China, so um, you know if you're looking for something that's American made and you're you know buy once and and cry once, then I'd definitely recommend something else. Um, you know, but for something that you want cheap to just go on your plinker, or maybe you've got a um, a son or daughter that's got a 22 and and they want a red dot sight. Um, and you want to kind of keep it nice and, and easy for them, this would work too. Um, I'd put it on offset candid sights, um, <coughs> but for a 22 uh, AR only. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about that. Um, let's go into the um, the tech gadget um, portion of the uh, the show. So uh, Jake, he sent me this link to a um, this tactical flashlight and uh, you know you would think you can only innovate with a flashlight as as far as people have already gone but this one actually uh, caught my eye and piqued my interest quite a bit um, the make is zero hour uh, it's a modular tactical flashlight but it also serves as a USB battery backup okay. um, yeah. so it is uh, you know a small flashlight um, with a um, crenulated crown, you know, so you can take a tissue sample if you need to use it as a self-defense device. Um, it's got a, uh, you know, nice um, positive button on the, um, on the side, but it's also a, uh, and it's a thousand lumen output, but uh, you can basically plug it into your device with a USB and it'll um, convert it into a, a compact battery backup with up to 10,000 I'm not an electrician. Milliamps, thank you, of power. uh, Enough to charge multiple USB devices. um, So easy to carry. There you go. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you're going to, you should carry a flashlight with your everyday carry anyway. um, And you should carry your phone. If, uh, I mean, if your battery goes dead, you just, you know, hopefully you have some backup batteries on you. But if your phone goes dead, sometimes you're hosed. So to have a flashlight that can charge your phone is actually. Very interesting. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it is for, cool. Yeah, it, it looks really, really thick. Like it looks like it's about as big as big around as a beer bottle. Really? Based on the based on the picture of the person's hand, unless they have like a super thin hand, it, I oh. think it looks really wide. Yeah, it's kind of stubby. Now that I look at it, there's a, yeah. uh, a you can take. It's actually. Um, Looks like he's got to roll a parachute cord in too. Yeah, some paracord. You can store quite a bit inside, which uh, so it it looks like maybe you won't be carrying this in your back pocket, but maybe your yeah. your coat pocket. Yeah, I'm thinking bailout bag maybe kind of a thing. Yeah, 
Like that would right, make more right. sense. To, but uh, yeah, I've got a thing. I think it's made by a company called Anker, which is about the same size as my iPhone. That's a battery backup. I carry that thing around all the time because I burn my battery out fast. And I love it. So something like this that actually has multi-function besides just the fact that it's a, you know, a, a black square that will charge my phone would be kind of cool uh, to have in my pack or whatever. But uh, yeah, be able to use it for something else other than that. Yep. Uh, waterproof, um, you know, 1,000 lumens. I mean, most people might think, well, heck, I can get one of those, like, battery backups. Uh, that give you like two extra hours at Walmart and then my, my iPhone has a flashlight on it but it ain't uh, a thousand lumens yeah that's exactly right that's going to be I mean that's for a hunter I can that'd be really nice because I hate it when I'm on a hunt and my phone dies uh, and then when it, you, you know you actually get um, you get an animal and you go to take pictures and your phone's dead <laughs> yeah. um, or, or you get lost and, and you're um, now in a survival situation and you can't call for help because your battery is dead. Um, those two reasons need, alone make it a valuable kit, I think. Yeah. They need some kind of cover to go over the backside too because I just see that getting full of sand and junk and you'll never be able to charge anything from it. Oh, yeah, the a USBs cap to, to plug are. the ports. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Maybe, maybe uh, Raven Concealment should make something for that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They can make a, a what is the same called? A zero hour stop to yeah. plug as well. Well and then also uh I mean hopefully it comes with an interchangeable cap that's not crenulated because I know sometimes <coughs> those can really tear a hole in your pocket. Uh yeah. So I mean if you're not planning to use it to, to stab a bear with, you know, take it off so you don't put a hole in your favorite hunting jeans. Yeah. So very cool piece of tech. Um you know, I'd love, I'd love to. If I see one in the store, I'll definitely pick it up and do a review. I'll drain my iPhone down to, uh, you know, nothing, and then, you know, plug one of these in and see just how much life I get out of it. Does it? Who makes it? Was that? Zero Hour. I think that's the name of the brand. Yeah, yeah Zero, Zero Hour. hour. Oh, yeah. The... I don't see a price. I wonder what they're gonna start going for. Oh, it's a Kickstarter. That's why. Uh. It's yeah, it's a Kickstarter, so I think it's a it's a pretty good project. Season right now they've got two hundred and eighty one backers and about fifty fifty thousand dollars of pledged and their goal is uh, oh, ten yeah. or a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they're halfway there so, it looks uh, like. If you feel like supporting something like that. Yeah. So um Hopefully they get their full funding and they're able to produce some of these. I mean, I think it'd be a hit. I think maybe if they made different sizes as well. So say someone doesn't want to carry something that's, you know, the size of a. God, it's almost the. Um, What's oh, a good analogy for that? Uh, I mean, it almost looks like it's like 40 millimeters. Yeah, it uh, looks like a short mag light, diameter. like a D cell mag light, but a little bit yeah. shorter. Than a, than a 2D cell light. Yeah. The ob it looks about the same size of an objective of a 40 millimeter scope. Yeah. Um, but if they made smaller ones, I mean, that maybe, you know, only charged you from like half battery life to full, or, you know, if you're dead, bring you up back up to half. Yeah. Um, if that means reducing some of the capacity for the convenience of being able to, to stow it a little easier, that would be a nice uh, variation as well. Yeah. It looks like you got to go 160 bucks to get a full to get the actual light with the charger and capability and all that kind of stuff on the on the Kickstarter, yeah. <clears throat> Which isn't crazy. Yeah. That's not a yeah, a lot of lot for more than money for, uh, for a nice flashlight. I paid yeah. uh, one 159, I think, for this TLR1 HL. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so their lights are not cheap. Nope. Well, it says that it is uh, fully submersible in water up to one meter, so I'm assuming that there is a waterproof uh, cap that goes over the, the, the USB ports and the, the different kind of ports on the back or else those yeah. wouldn't yeah. be submersible. Gotta, there's got to be something. Yeah. yeah. One meter is not, like, you can use it in the rain, but don't go swimming, I guess. Right. Yeah. 
You could well, drop go, it in the water and pick it up. Go go swimming, but not in the deep end. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. As long as so, you're in the three foot part, then you're fine. Yeah, gold plated internals um, for extended life and corrosion resistance, heat dissipation, um, and C E N R O S H S uh, compliant. I'm guessing that's some kind of uh, quality control compliance with um, restriction of hazardous materials, whether the internals uh, electronics have some it's typical standard boilerplate stuff in them. Yeah. But uh, it looks it looks pretty cool. Capacity, um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing kind of two models here, uh, 2,600 milliamps and 3,400 milliamps. Um Sanyo and Panasonic. Looks like they're made in Japan. Or no, maybe they're just reviewing other ones. It's still Kickstarter, so how can there be specs? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, the batteries, there's only like two, one one company in the United States that makes batteries. The rest of them are in Japan. Oh, yeah, uh, here you go. No, they, those are the batteries. Those are the oh, yeah. two different variant of the battery. One is made by Sanyo and one is made by Panasonic. Okay. Yeah, that milliamp is the runtime, you know. Yeah. Yeah, capacity, charge cycles, 1,000. So, yeah. Look, yeah. Looks like there are different caps. There's a flat cap, an open end cap, and a carabiner cap, something that oh, you can you clip on. So, uh, very cool. Looking forward to seeing that uh, on the marketplace here soon. Uh, so, um, I think uh, we're wrapping up here. Want to uh, promote uh, Gun Girl Radio podcast uh, on the Firearms Radio Network, uh, hosted by some very talented ladies, uh, um, Randy Rogers and uh, Judy Golub. Um, some of the best shooters uh, you'll ever see, regardless of gender. And the fact that they're females even just makes them more awesome because. It gets more females into the industry, and they're my girlfriend's heroes, and they're my heroes as well. So uh, I want to plug their uh, their podcast. Subscribe by going to www.gungirlradio.com slash iTunes and give them a listen. It's very uh, it's it's good listening for for anybody. Um, you know, I, I love listening to the back episodes and their experiences with, with three gun and, and just kind of get a, a professional's insight into uh, mental preparation for you know the stresses of, of competing and then um, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah I listen to their stuff um, it's good so, yeah <clears throat> and uh, also uh, got all the talent now yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I was reading uh, Randy's Facebook, and she was asking what everyone's Christmas presents list was. And <laughs> one of the first guys to comment said, "Well, now that you're shooting for blue, how about your Glock 34?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah, nice. I thought that was that was pretty entertaining. But uh, yeah, definitely give that a listen. Um, I did their their logo uh, based on the uh, the Gun Guy Radio logo. With I changed up the motif. To different colors and a little bit different graphic elements um, that kind of represented the shooting world, and yeah. uh, it was definitely great getting to work with with both of those ladies. Um, yeah, you did good work too. Yeah. Oh, Lots yeah. Well, cool thank stuff. you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm glad that I'm able to contribute more than just graphics, but I'm also glad that some of my best graphics work is for this network. So uh, I like to think it it uh, it helps with the uh, the amount of listeners we get as far as people that see good graphics and, and see how professional and how, how good the quality is. Yeah. Um, I hope it, it reflects that because, I mean, Jake does a very good job and works hard for the best quality. I mean, uh, I also like to thank him for sending me uh, a mic and a uh, headset so that I can um, up my hosting qualities a little bit. Um, so, I mean, that guy just lives and breathes podcasts and uh, big shout out to him yep. and hope he gets better. He'll probably see his mug next week, hopefully, if uh, you know he recuperates and his family's feeling better. Um, so you can still send questions and comments to him, uh, even though he's taking a sick day. You can still vent and uh, tell him 
how uh, you know how you feel about the podcast, good or bad. Um, so you can send those questions and comments to podcast at firearmsinsider.tv. And remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Um, also check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network. Uh, and you can find that at www.firearmsradio.tv slash iTunes. And um, all fantastic shows. And the artwork for all of them is just fantastic, <laughs> if I must say myself. myself. Um, so we're still seeking for um, some, some, some guest hosts for this new format. Um, some people that uh, can dedicate some time weekly to kind of come in. So we're going to do like a panel. So where there's uh, about four or five individuals that like to appear um, somewhat regularly. That way, if someone's sick, you got uh, some some stand-ins that can that can help out. Um, or we can just have all all five six people and have a big old party uh, to see if <laughs> everyone's bandwidth can handle that. <laughs> so uh, experience with handguns, rifles, shotguns, competition, reloading, gunsmithing, those kind of qual uh, qualifications. Um, if you have some expertise on one, um, that's great. If you have expertise on all of them, if you're a, a, a tank platoon expert, um, that's also a good quality to have. Um, there's so only uh, there's only about ten of us in the Marine Corps right now, so that are actually commanding platoons. So it'd be weird if one of the other ones showed up. Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, you know, I'd appreciate you guys coming on the show as well. Uh, you know, thanks for your service, Derek. And uh, definitely, Tony, thank you for joining us, too. Uh, they, they pay me to shoot things and blow stuff up. It's not even a real job. So, <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate, appreciate you both joining me tonight and uh, um, sharing some of your reviews with us, for sure. Yeah, and absolutely. You're, all, you're, also, you're always welcome back as well uh, if you've got some more free time. Sure. Um, contact uh, probably Jake and um, eventually sometime you might be contacting me but uh, Jake's probably the uh, first person you want to contact to uh, do another one of these it's definitely a pleasure having you guys on yeah cool I'm gonna try to get I'm going to try to get my electronics in line before I contact him <laughs> yeah well, it, it, it's definitely not easy but uh, it's worth it um, you know I mean I um you know, you, if you got the good computer and uh, get your audio hooked up, I mean, uh, always there's always some complications, but uh, the smoother it runs, the kind of better result. Yeah, I got a good, I bought a good webcam and a good headset, and just could not get it to connect for some reason. I'm gonna take my laptop to the doctor when I get home this weekend and let him work on it. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so the uh, Jake's email, Jake at firearmsradio.tv, for any more comments, questions, feedback, um, and uh, that concludes the episode. So I hope everyone has a safe week. Hey, it's cold out there, unless you're Florida, you know. <laughs> so yes. uh, mm -hmm. screw you guys, and not just kidding, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're fortunate enough to live in a state where it's above freezing, congratulations. Um, if you're shooting in the cold, you know. Oh, did you see Julie Gallup's picture on Facebook? Uh, recently? Yeah. She, uh, posted a picture. She was outside, uh, shooting. It was like 21 below. She had, a, a her eyelashes were icicles, literally icicles. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> it sure is. Because I would look like an abominable snowman or something. No, not interested. Wow. <laughs> yeah, check that well, out. It's yeah, funny. Uh, I just went to shooting last week here, and uh, we we had icicles on on our mustaches. Me and my buddy. Uh, <laughs> so if you got facial hair, bundle up, folks, <laughs> yeah. or, or or shave it. November's over. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, guys, thanks again for joining, and uh, feel free to come back and have a good week. All right. Thanks, you too. Thanks, you too. Nice to meet you, Yep. Have a good night. All right.